It's the late 1970s and we are still in the midst of the Cold War. The Soviet intention was to expand communism. Possibility exists that we actually were going to come to blows. So much was going on in the Soviet Union as far as development of weapons programs that we had to find a mechanism to put that before not only the intelligence community but the public as well. The Secretary of Defense and the President wanted this word out. There is little doubt that the Soviet Union did embark upon a bold venture to establish plans. A list of key regime leaders who must be pursued and brought to justice. Soviet military power is one of the most important documents the Department of Defense has ever produced. This was a means to educate the American public as to what we believed from the intelligence was the capabilities and nature and intent of the Soviet Union in regard to its international affairs, especially using military power to gain the upper hand. The president wanted people to understand what the nature of the threat was from the Soviet Union. They had a Typhoon-class submarine that carried 16 missiles that was almost two football fields long. That's as long as a cruiser. They had new aircraft, both fighters and bombers, new long-range missile systems, and there had to be a way to present that to the American public. Here we had a way to be able to let people know, both in the United States and in Europe and in the Soviet Union and in the Warsaw Pact, just what the disparity was between Soviet forces and Western forces. Taking something that was, by its very nature, some of the most sensitive information in all U.S. government holdings and suddenly told, take this out to the public and show this to them, uh, was among the greatest challenges the Defense Intelligence Agency has ever seen. And what we found was if we were creative, if we took information that was extremely sensitive but stripped it of the specific sources and methods that we used to collect the information, that we could downgrade it to a much lower classification level, unclassified even. And also, if we thought outside the box, we could take things like pictures. Rather than showing the picture that maybe one of our spies took, we could instead paint it. And we wouldn't be divulging them who took the picture, when they took the picture, and therefore risk the sources and methods of how we collected the information. My role then in Soviet military power was to write those sections that had to deal with short range, intermediate range ballistic missiles, and then later on, Soviet military doctrine and strategy. From a personal perspective, Soviet military power was great because I could actually share with my family what I worked on for a living. Because otherwise, what we did was held in such secrecy. After the first edition of Soviet military power was introduced, we believed that we had put out our one edition and that was really going to be it. But the feedback was so positive that we only got one year off. And in 1983, we had to then go back to the grindstone and we put together a Soviet military power edition every year until the end of the Soviet Union in 1991. And even President Reagan uh, had been known as thumb through it. A few times I went to the White House in the Oval Office, they made sure there was one lying on the coffee table so I knew it had gone that, that far. And what we found was that our allies were so impressed that they started volunteering such information as that they were gathering to assist us with each new edition. It was an Alliance product. One of our editions of Soviet military power was actually put out in Russian. And the interesting thing is that when the Soviet Union got their hands on this, and it was given to several senior officials in the Politburo, they had so little information on their own military that they actually used DIA's Soviet military power in Russian to find out about their own military. Soviet military power was an enormous information operation. By putting forth a publication like Soviet Military Power and having it so well received was a contributor to bringing DIA into the big leagues. 
The fact that DIA was able to inform the public at an unclassified level over more than a decade through use of our information and intelligence, it ultimately proved instrumental in ending the Cold War.